Hello everyone, my name is George Sen. I'll be talking about backtesting crew cross validation for the financial data studies course in Nova MS. I'll be covering what backtesting is, some of the main approaches. I'll be talking about cross validation in finance. And lastly, I'll be talking about combinatorial purge cross validation, an approach suggested by Professor Di Prado. So what's backtesting in finance? Uh, first of all, there are two main approaches that one can take uh, to perform a backtest. You can either take, in, take past observations and perform a walk for the approach, or you can use these past observations to simulate scenarios that did not happen. The most common approach is the walk forward one, where almost everyone when they think about backtesting in finance, they think about the walk forward approach. It's pretty simple. You have a strategy. Uh, let's say you want to buy if it's above a certain moving average or whatever, and you move back in time and you implement that strategy like it's um, trading on paper and see what would be the result of that. A specific strategy. Uh, the interpretation is pretty simple. You just you can just look at the, the end result of the, of the strategy. You can see what's your PNL and whatnot. Uh, if the right methods are being applied to the data, if you're purging the data, there won't be data leakage problems from the training set to the data set, to the testing data set. Um, the other way. Which is less used, which is less common, is to test different strategy or to test a strategy um, in a scenario that it was not trained for. So, for instance, you could take um, you could train an algorithm for the data from 2015 to 2020 and test it on 2007, 2007 until 2009. So you could see how would your strategy work in such a stressed environment. As an example, you can see on the left that if you were to have a data set with 10 years of data, you could use the first eight to train your model to define a strategy. We'll call it an uh, optimization period. And then with that, uh, that strategy defined, you could use the last two years, which were left out, um, to test your strategy, you do a walk for the approach day by day, month by month, year by year, and see what would be your end result, what would be your end PNL. And then you could assess kind of the um, effectiveness of the strategy. However, you'd have to have in mind that you are only testing one scenario, and that's you can end up overfitting for that scenario because you left out two years of data and then you'll be trying different different models for the first eight years of the training data set and you always try to optimize results for the last two and you'll always use the same last two in this case so you'll try to overfit even if you're not using it as a training data set it might not be really indicative of future performance um, because it can be if if in the next five years let's say we have a, a really big bull market your uh, strategy which was already biased for bull markets maybe uh, will perform extremely well but if it's not a bull market if it's a bear market then it will fail so you also have to take that into consideration. The, the next set of points that will show up um, might be too different or too far, um, too similar from your training data set, and then results might end up being um, might end up being biased. Lastly, uh, because you're taking decisions because of your testing set, which is only um, two years of, of data when you have 10 years in total um, you're actually using a small portion of the data set to take decisions so uh, that might not result in the best decisions another approach to backtest your strategy would be to use cross-validation
uh, for cross validation we first have to define how many folds you, we want to have in this case let's say that we want to have five folds and let's say as well that we are using the, the same data set as before so a 10 year data set we would divide it into five identically sized data sets so two years each and then if you look at on the left of, of the slide uh, you'd always take out the, the blue square and train your data on the remaining gray squares and you would do this five times always with a different square that's going to be left up and then the result of the model will be the average of the results of each um, each iteration individually this technique guarantees that we are not optimizing for a, a single data set testing data set i mean um, but for the entirety of the data set in a different way as any approach cross validation has a set of advantages and disadvantages the first advantage is that you're testing um, different historical scenarios and not just one and that prevents overfitting the second advantage is that you're using equally sized data sets for every decision that you make thus your decisions are based in comparable uh, data sets in terms of the amount of information that each has lastly as an advantage data points are exclusive to a single testing set and each data point is used both for training and testing in different situations so your out of sample data is actually the whole data set as disadvantages and same as the walk forward approach you are only forecasting you you will only have one forecast by observation so only one path it will not be an indicator of best performance even though it can be helpful to see stress tests and different other approaches to uh, strategies so that's good in its way and there can be leakage between different data sets because of the serial correlation that exists and if you're not uh, taking uh, thoughtful uh, care of this problem you might end up having leakage problems and it will affect your performance and your end results as a different approach that addresses some of the drawbacks of both the walk forward approach and the cross validation method professor de prado suggests the combinatorial birch cross validation method and this method is an adaptation of the regular cross validation but it also addresses multiple paths multiple um tests for the same data or multiple forecasts let's say for the same data data point as an example you can see below we are seeing that we want to have six training sets and two test splits and the number of total splits that we can get uh, is given by the, the the computation of the total number of combinations of six over four which is 15 and with this we'll see that for the s1 the split one will be training with g3 g4 g5 g6 and testing on g1 and g2 for split 2 we'll be training with g2 g4 um yeah g5 g6 and for s3 we'll be training with g2 g3 g5 g6 and so on and by doing it this way we'll make sure that we'll have five paths five different forecasts for each data point that we have taking the example from before one could perform five different back tests from the five different paths that were available from the cpvc so the first path uh, note test once in the in the table below would be comprised of using the split one 
uh, training and test sets where from it we would get the tests uh, for, for the G1 and G2 datasets. From split2 we would get the G3 dataset results and then from S3, G4, S4, G5, S5, uh, from S5, G6. Then if you wanted the second path, we'd do the same again. From split 2, we would get the G1 result. From split 6, we'll get G2 and G3 and so on. This way, one could perform multiple um, ratio, ratio calculations and indicators for each path individually and then uh, see how would the stretch uh, how would the strategy fare in different situations and take the best decision that would uh, maximize the investor's um, appetite for risk and whatnot. This way, obviously, overfitting will be really hard to happen as we are testing multiple different uh, historical data sets and different scenarios. So it would be really hard to optimize uh, a single scenario that would overfit to, to the real data. Both the cross-validation and walk-forward approach can be, especially the walk-forward approach can be um, overfitted to the data and can be used in the academic, academical world and whatnot to show far better results than, than what they really are. And so this approach could help find a way where the papers that are published are in fact true and are not manipulations of the data to get better results than they really are. And that's it for me. I hope I could help you in learning something about this topic. Thanks.